Welcome back. All right, House uh, Democrats just began to vote on Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus package. Uh, it is expected to pass without Republican support and be sent to President Biden's desk to be signed into law. Our senior columnist Rick Newman says this is good politics for Democrats and could bode well for the upcoming midterm elections in 2022. He wrote about this for our site and he joins us now. Hey, Rick, good to see you. Um, so hey. I can see where passing the stimulus bill would play well for the Democrats, but but are there any risks here? Sure, uh, I mean, let, let me discuss real briefly why I think this is smart politics for them. Uh, this bill's very popular. It's polling at at least a 60% approval rate in some polls, 70%. Uh, so that means it's not just uh, Democrats who like this, some independent, a lot of independents like it, and so do some Republicans even. If you compare that to what the Republicans' big push was when they had uh, both houses of Congress in 2017 and 18, it was tax cuts. And tax cuts were not appropriate, uh, not popular the way they uh, ran that bill. Uh, many people thought those tax cuts favored businesses and the wealthy too much. That, um, that, that uh, law never got higher than 50% approval. And in fact, it was only around 40% at the time in the midterms in 2018 when the Republicans lost the House. So uh, unless something unexpected happens, my guess is the Democrats are setting themselves up pretty well uh, for the 2018 midterms. This, is, this big spending will, be, will still be injecting money into the economy next year. And that ought to make uh, make uh, the economy seem pretty good. This could overheat the economy. We've talked about that a lot on our air. There's some chance it will push up inflation and the Federal Reserve uh, might have to uh, raise interest rates sooner than expected, uh, but probably not this year. Uh, so that becomes a 2022 risk. In the meanwhile, we're probably gonna see something of a boom by the middle of 2021. So what does this all mean then for the Republicans, if it's going to play out well for the Dems in the in the eyes of of the voters, uh, do the Republicans look like they don't want to play ball here? They do right now, uh, and uh, I think Democrats are going to have a lot they're going to be able to tell voters about uh, and claim success uh, when we uh, all go back to vote in less than two years in the midterms. There's one other thing tucked in this uh, relief bill, which is an expansion of Obamacare subsidies for middle, uh, middle income and middle class families. That's gonna help probably a couple million people uh, find it more affordable to buy health insurance. So what are Republicans gonna to say to voters uh, if the economy's getting better, we're uh, through the COVID crisis and people really pretty much think Biden did what he said he was gonna do, which is get us back to normal. I'm not sure what the Repu Republican argument against that is. Uh, I guess they could say, but look at the national debt. It is gonna be, substantially larger. It's now, I think, $28 trillion. We're going to add about $2 trillion to that with the new bill. So let's call it $30 trillion, $31 trillion by next year. Uh, how many Americans care about the national debt at this point? Maybe, I don't know, 10%. Uh, and they're probably already Republicans. You know, anything could change. We could have another pandemic. We could have new variants in the coronavirus uh, that undermine the vaccines. But I think the Democrats look like they're in pretty good shape uh, at least at this point, going into the next uh, election cycle. Bite your tongue, Rick, about another pandemic. I'll tell you, we are you know, we are so done. We are so done. I hope, it, I hope, does, switch, I hope it doesn't happen as much as anybody. I want to switch gears for a minute and just get your thoughts, because you and I have talked a lot over the, certainly during the Trump administration, about the relationship between the U.S. and China. And we've got word today that some top U.S. and Chinese officials are going to meet, uh, I believe it's next week in Alaska, for really the first high-level meeting between those two countries since Biden took office. Uh, I don't know if anything substantial will really come out of this. It's just It might just be sort of a, a meet and greet. But what, what do you think the hopes are? I, mean, I, I would have to think that trade is going to be a a big part of those discussions. No, it's a significant meeting uh, led by senior members of both governments. Uh, and interestingly, uh, it looks as if the United States is not leading on trade, actually. The uh, person leading this uh, meeting is going to be Secretary of State Tony Blinken and also uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Biden's um, trade uh, representative, Catherine Tai, she's not confirmed yet. She's probably going to get confirmed soon, but she's not in the job yet, which uh, tells you She's not the one organizing this meeting. So uh, their trade is important, but B Biden has pretty much signaled that he's going to just let the status quo exist for a little while with regard to trade in China, which means those uh, tariffs that Trump imposed on Chinese imports and the 
uh, corresponding tariffs they put on U.S. exports. Those are probably going to remain in place. Meanwhile, other big issues between uh, the Biden administration and China are security, obviously, uh, Taiwan, uh, human rights in Hong Kong, the Uyghurs in Western China and human rights violations there. And then also climate change. Uh, President Trump had no interest in climate change, but uh, the Biden administration has signaled a big difference on that. John Kerry is the point person for relations with other countries on climate change. So we'll see if John Kerry shows up at that meeting. I think if Catherine Tai, the trade representative, is confirmed, I think she will be there. I'm just not sure that's going to be the primary focus of the meeting. All right. Thanks a lot, Rick Newman. Good to see you as always.